Alhamdulillah, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, Today, we talk about four points. First point is whose fault. Yesterday was a disaster. Come next to me, please. Me? Yeah. Because the video she recorded, she recorded. No, I not recorded. She recorded. No. <laughs> she recorded. Okay. Has no babies. Oh. Whose fault? Always the boss is right. Always the boss is right. In the philosophy of companies or organizations, they always support the boss. They never support the employees. They never support the people who are the smallest organization in the position. So if we say there is no voice, everybody would say it's because of you. Oh. Oh. Cry, cry, cry. Oh. This is the culture. But it was not her. So the boss has to find another excuse. So he went to the smallest employee, so he has to find another excuse, because people knew it was not her. What's the other excuse? Allah, Qadr. Allah did not want the voice to come there. So everyone say, yay, because this is Allah, it's the Lord. But it's wrong, because Allah asked every one of us to go by the book to check everything before we start anything. So it was not Allah. But people find an excuse to the boss since Allah. Because the boss is always right. But you know whose fault was it? It was the boss. Not her, not anybody else. Because the boss, when he gave her, the device did not check before giving it to her. But people will say the boss is always right. right. Which is wrong. Which is wrong. It's wrong. The boss is never always right. Sometimes he does something right and something wrong as well. This is something you know. But at the middle of this, the boss has to understand something. And one more to say, when after nearly two hours of hard working, she did, and you listen and interact, <laughs> nothing is there. What the boss has to say, one more, Alhamdulillah, finish. Alhamdulillah, thank God, khalas finish. You know why? Because yesterday I was very excited about you and the quality of the talk. So I mean the lesson here, Allah does not want you to become excited of something you achieve. That's why Allah, in spite of the fact the fault was myself, was the boss, because there's no voice, it's because of me, not because of you. But the lesson is, don't ever feel that you are, ah, oh, I've done it. Always start with remembering your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we fail or succeed, we say, Alhamdulillah. This is a lesson from yesterday. If you do it today, <laughs> I will say the boss is always right. <laughs> this is the first part as a lesson to me. Okay? Never be afraid of saying the boss is wrong. Especially to me. Yeah. Okay? That's number, that's number one point. Okay. Number two, the donkey. The donkey theory. Yeah, Bismillah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I've seen the movie by the way, but the song is okay, but I don't want to look at you. I love you donkey. I love you donkey. I love, I'd be so very angry if somebody says you Ahmad. See, but the Egyptian has to go to dancing by the way. It's a part of the culture of the international community. Thank you. This is our champion today, the donkey. Why I talk about the donkey? Because we started in Islamic League, my age was 33. Three and three. Three and three and three. Three and three and three. That means 3,333 years. At that age, when you are young, see, coming yesterday we used you, that's why the voice did not come out. Let's use the Bosnian. <laughs> Let's use the Bosnian. Come in, Mr. Bosnian. <laughs> Maybe the voice will come out. They were, they were scared of the Turk. <laughs> the air tool, huh? Oh, what? Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> And actually, at this age, or your age, which is the mid 20s, and then the third is we have to work like donkeys. Donkeys are very well organized. You tell them the system, they follow it blindly. We overwork them and they never complain. If you want to gain experience, knowledge when you are young and your job is five hours, you might make it seven or ten or eleven. When I was doing my American degree, or even the second day, because before this uh, Wi-Fi and others, we used to go to libraries to work for hours. For the second degree, I used to study every day for 14 hours to be able to have the knowledge. In the medical degree, when I was working in UK, I was to work overnight. When you are on call, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday we leave at 5 o'clock, continuous, to look after patients. Nowadays, young people like him, like you, work maybe 5-6 hours a day, especially if you are on call on Saturday and Sunday. And our pay was minimum as doctors. My first salary, you know how much was it? As a 250 pound a month as a doctor. I was very happy. And this was my first salary to send to my mother at home. So at our age when we are young, if we want to learn, we have the experience that we have to work like the donkey. But don't dance like him. <laughs> don't dance like the Egyptian, huh? <laughs> anyway, because I, I, I know the song, but I have not seen the video, because I know that the video, the dancing, and the, all the young girl is not, yani, whatever she thought. Ah, I have not seen it, huh? She didn't look at this. Very good. Maybe a woman can look, but not you. <laughs> Her third can. So this is it. For the first 20 years in my life with Islamic belief, including Jamal, 
including Rashid in France, include Jamal in Belgium and Holland, include the young people, we were working like donkeys. No weekend rest, okay? No holiday, even for Eid. During Ramadan, during Ramadan, we used to go out for something called caravan tour. From day one till Eid or after Eid, not with our families, having iftari and sahri, but with the community, talking to them working with them, communicating with them to build it. So this was the age when we use the philosophy of the donkey theory, working hard to gain the knowledge and to gain the experience as much as we can. By mid-90s, I was 44. And a lot of people, five or six young people like you, in UK, plus Rashid was in the 30s, Jamal was in the 30s at the beginning, and all of us were very young and energetic. But with me in UK was Anwar, was nearly in the secondary school, and he went to America after that. Jangir Malik went to America. Then, but the people who stayed behind was somebody called Salah Saeed in the 20s, Mustafa Asman in the early 30s. Uh, Harun Atallah, also early trustees. Harun Atallah, you know, he's one of the trustees here. Okay. Uh, Harun Atallah, uh, Nasr Hajj Hamid was the previous CEO of Islamic League Worldwide. Okay. Faji Aitani was actually in the 20s. Those people use the donkey theory at their age, late 20s to early 30s. To make the second phase when I was at the age of thinking, because I have the knowledge, acting, because I have the experience from the first 10 or 15 years. When you become knowledgeable after you work like donkey, you will be able to guide people. You can't guide people without knowledge, without experience without learning, I become the wake-up caller. You know in Ramadan, somebody come late night to wake you up. What do you call it in Turkish? The one who comes with the drum, wake up, wake up, no. Taharati. So when you have this knowledge and the experience, Zaharati, which is a wake-up caller, is the one who is raising the awareness of the people. Telling them this is right, this is wrong. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. When you go to any community with the knowledge, the experience, you'll be able to tell them, wake up. See, this is wrong. This is right. Why? Because you have the knowledge. Second phase in your life, young people, is to start to guide others, to advocate for others, to stand for the rights of others. This is al musaharati phase. The third one, when you become in the 50s, or early, the late 50s or early 60s, after all these 20, 30 years, you have to create an industry after you. What that means? You sit down with young people like him and like you, and you become like okay. the, the blending mixer. You know, it yeah. huh? what do you call it? Mixer. 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 Yeah. mixer. If you want to make cake, bring the flour, butter, milk, sugar, okay. egg, egg, oh sorry, thank you, eggs, <laughs> can't go without eggs, <laughs> and mix them together. So somebody like me who have about 30 or something years of experience, and somebody like him or you have to sit down together to mix their ideas and produce a new product. You can't mix these ideas unless you have the experience and the knowledge. Because you are, because you are talking about people, about life of people, about emotion of people. 
about future of people. You can't just get anybody who is PhD or master or whatever you call it and tell him or her, come and sit down and go, no, you can't. Where's the experience? Where's the knowledge? Where is, where is, where is? Okay, and that's why people at my age have to sit down with people at his age to get the heat of the zealous feeling, the power of young people, and produce with them a product. And this product will be implemented by them. Clear? Because you are thinking seriously, deeply, I know. And look at your eyes, you and see that you are mm, trying to. What this man is talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about fundraising or finance, and they take us to a different world. Huh? My name, my, my world is banana world, because my name is El Banna. El Banna plants banana trees. You like banana or banana skin? Banana. No banana skin. I take the skin, you take the banana. <laughs> so when you said your role now, at my age, it's said just with those people. To ask them with me to make the product which they can take for the community. And they will believe in it. Why? Because it is their own product. And the project called community building. Because I myself at my age cannot live forever. This is something. They are going to live for generations to come. To keep building community. To keep advocating. Keep working hard and keep passing the stick of the relay team from generation to generation to generation to generation. Continuity. Continuity. So we start with the donkey, then we go to the wake up caller, then we go to the action and the community product. And building the generation. This is actually your role. We are not here for a job. We are not here for a salary. Salary is we need. Job is we need. But we are here to go from the donkey stage, the wake up corner, Musaharati, the mixer, and community product and community cohesion. Islamic Reef was the strongest. An immediate response in the mid 90s. We managed to bring and to react <clears throat> to most of the global problems before anybody else. I'll give you one example. In 2000, no, 1999. 1999 was the Kosovo and Second Chechnya War. Second Chechnya war. The British government said nobody should go to Russia. Nobody should go to Russia at that time. We decided to go to Russia. We sent them an email to the foreign office. They did not reply to us. I was on a plane to go to Moscow to be received by Muhammad. Muhammad was the country representative in, uh, in Chechnya. We landed in Moscow. At that time, because at that time there was an allowance of ten thousand dollars to spend on the spot for any emergency. Go him ten thousand dollars, let him do whatever he wants with it, and write a concept paper like this one. Bring it to us to make a project. Okay. So the foreign office rang us on Monday and spoke to Harun, and Harun said. To them, what is Dr. Han? Ask Dr. Haban not to go even to Moscow. You know what Harold told them? Dr. Banda could be in Chechnya now. You are too late for us. You are because we take our decision and fly to do what we can. Independent. Independent thinking and independent in action. When we landed there with Muhammad, I went inside Chechnya with Muhammad, and when I met whoever left in the city, Grozny, totally destroyed, totally destroyed. I said, totally destroyed. <coughs> yani in a very 
peaceful and humane way. And humane way. This is 1999. Good. Good. Then, me and Muhammad said to Harun, please Harun, can we have another zero next to the 10,000, next to 100,000? Harun is an accountant and financial. Who oh, managed to twist his arm. He said, okay, fine. When we came out from Chechnya, we were ahead of UN like, for the record. For the record. For the record. And we were ahead of all the family of IFRC and ICRC. Because we were in Grozny, independently, thinking effectively to help those people with no resources but with the heart, the vision, the soul, and the mind. When we came out to look at the program, me and Muhammad were actually in a city called Nalshik, the capital of Kabardin Balkaria, the middle of Caucasus. I was, you know, when I was sleeping, it was a studio room. Muhammad was a young man with a wife. Her name is Jannah, heaven. And of course, it's one, one room, which is sitting room, dining room, bedroom, and I am a guest. Where shall I sleep? With them in the bedroom? <laughs> Where? Uh, outside the studio. Where? Bathroom. On the floor? <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> she said bathroom. Good, good thing. Where else? Bathroom. Kitchen. Ah, uh, kitchen. <laughs> Thank you. Balcony, very good. In the corridor for about 10 days. The corridor was the office because Jannah was actually sitting on a desk in the corridor to write everything and to translate from Russian into English. Okay? Because at that time we did not go to hotel. Saving $30 a night, $20 a night. No, we have to be there. When I rang Harun after putting this program back, we want uh, three layers tents with a stove and heater because of the snow. We want uh, cars, we want warehouses, we want, we want. The budget became another zero, one million. I rang Harun, Harun, please. We want one million. Haru <laughs> nearly, nearly, nearly going to slap me on the face from the other side. I, I, I don't know what he has done. Just maybe he put the telephone down and just cut. It's just enough. You went from 10,000 to 100,000, from 100,000 to a million? Are you crazy? Where are you going to get the money from? This was about two weeks. You know what happened, sisters and brothers? By February, March, April 2000, we spent more than two million dollars. But we raised because we were the only people on the ground at the right time when people need you. When there was no media coverage, we became the agent of WFP with the RC Danish and with the IFRC family to divide the budget of the World Food Program and UNCR between the three of us. Even WFP, World Food Program, used to hire or to store their stock in our warehouses. Because we had the vision to have these big warehouses and the transportation which is used to pay for the petrol, for the oil, for the drivers, for everything. Because you were there before anybody else. Because if you take the risk to save the <coughs> life of others, Allah will never, or the Lord will never forget about you. He will give you the risk. For this risk could take your life, could claim your life. Islamic Leaf, 12 people of Islamic Leaf were killed during the conflict, whether in Chechnya, whether in Pakistan, whether in Somalia, different countries. And for their life, for these lives, 
who are still functional. And this is what I'm trying to say. Actually, you have to have this process in your life to be able to change the life of others. We are not here to change our own life, but we are here to make our life as a change maker for the life, lives of other people. I tell you something, when we were in Moscow airport, I had beard, bigger than yours. I was good Muslim there too, but now I don't know what I am. Okay? And Muhammad has beard. So we had the boarding pass for the ticket from Moscow to to no, to Nazran, which is the capital of uh, Ingushet, which is next to uh, Chechnya. So the travel agent in the airport, when she looked at our faces, and dark, and she was originally Syrian, so maybe he looked like the Russian. She went to get the security. And Bismillah, mashallah, the security woman was something, you know, the Russian when they become very strong. <coughs> she came like this. What's the problem in, in Russia? She said, I don't want those people to come on my plane. They are going to, seriously, mm -hmm. this in Russia. They are going to Ingushetia, Nazran. She looked at us and she spoke in Russian to Muhammad. He said, We are going to help people. You know what she did? Take your boarding pass, board. The woman was screaming at her. She said, Let them board. They are coming to help our people. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did a woman like this to accept our mission. You don't know who will support you, whether they are Muslim or non Muslim. This was in 1999. And Chechnya's success story was made not by Muhammad himself, but by another woman called Natasha. You remember Natasha? Yes. She was equivalent to 100 men. She does not know how to smile, but she knew, she knew how to work. She knew how to be respected by all the securities in the area, whether it's in Goshechia, whether they are actually in Kabardin Bakaria, whether the Russian and others. We so managed huh? manage more than 150 people. And she was managing, as I said, 150 people too. And Natasha is super. That's why the role of woman in the material work is not, not a necessity, it's a necessity. It's only essential, it's a necessity, it's a necessity. And Natasha made the history of Islamic I must be No, no, it's, I'm just, I don't know. I can't tell. All right. The second introduction, which I'm going to change, I know I can sit down. Dobro, dobro. Wala, 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 wala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wala. I was supposed to be giving some prepared talk, but I said, let me scratch your mind actually with me this morning. by dividing my introduction again into two parts. The first one, okay, you want me to bring it here? I can bring this one here. You want? I want to interact with you, not just keep lecturing, lecturing, lecturing. So, do we consider our work as an industry or not? This is the first question. And if you do, what do you mean by industry? You answer. I ask question and you answer. Yes, it's an industry. It's an industry. Why? Because we are, we are raising the money and we are 
who are raising money, yeah. okay, and spending money. Yeah. Why it's industry? Ah, that's the second lacha. Anybody else? Because there is a structure. There's a structure. Human resources, yeah. financial resources. Very good, very good. Anybody else? Yes? No, also because there is uh, the um, distribution of the work. The distribution of work. Very good. Anybody else? It's working like a normal company. It's working like a normal company. Okay, abnormal people working like normal people. <laughs> Yes, everybody says an industry, but this is the outcome of our work. If you think that you are creating industry, you have to go from this to this. Because our work starts as emotional response. There's war, there's flood, there's volcano, there's earthquake. So everybody is running to help the victim, emotion. Emotion, emotion, emotion. We are driven by emotion. Emotional. That's why most of the funds we raise were raised during emergency. Not for rehabilitation, not for capacity building, not for research, not for development, not for community building, for peace building. Clear? Emotion will start. And each one of us will stand up for the victim. Whether they are Muslim, we should stand up for them, whether they are Muslim or non-Muslim. Okay? Or whether they are from our same sect or color, from other color and sect and background. For this humanitarian work. We start as emotional, and everybody can do that. Then we start to organize our work through making initiative, making a small project. <laughs> okay? Some of us go from the emotional stage to make initiative. And the initiative could last for six months or one year and sometimes for a year or so. Organized initiative might be uh, three or four or five people sit down together on the street level on the area level, okay, and sit together to help the locality, okay. Then it goes, after we organize our initiatives, into seasonal, like during Ramadan, during Kurbani, during uh, Christmas, during Easter, season for raising funds from people and spending funds. And now we have called seasonal program, a seasonal project in Islamic Republic. So go and see, then one, two, three. This is actually growing in the mindset, the development in the mindset. Then we do it every year, become traditional. When you keep repeating the same thing every year, it becomes traditional. Like a food basket, like the cattle pit, like feed the fasting like a children or a school bag, all these become traditional. We keep doing it everything, every year, every year, every year, every year. Okay? We are maturing, you see, going from emotion. And then after these years, we want to register our initiative and our work to go to the government, make organization. Which is an organization. Once we start to go to the organization level, that means that actually the government will be checking on us. We have to be, as you said, structured, financed, and all this sort of thing. From inside. But you see, this journey from emotion to organization will take about two, three years. Because you have to have volunteers, you have to have friends, you have to have people believe in what you are doing. You have to have credibility in the community. You have to have networking, you have to be trusted to, to, for people to give you money. Once we start organization, we we'll go to the structure. Because so government will be checking on us, giving us some regulation, monitoring us, and asking us to write reports. Okay? And this organization will be owned by the group of people who found this. To be like 
a local organization. If you want to make it professional, for me, myself, professionalism is not a talk, not a workshop, it's efficiency. Efficiency, most importantly, in the timekeeping of delivering your project. He said, I do A, you do A. I do B, you do B. This professional. There's not somebody coming to you in suit and tie and with a very powerful uh, PowerPoint presentation. High. Speaking three, four languages. High. So what high? Deliver. Professionalism is delivery. Professionalism is impact. Professionalism is measuring what you have done to the community. Professionalism is humility, as you said yesterday, and manner. Professionalism is your values. Professionalism is your behavior with other people. It's complex structure. All this goes as a structure. Professionalism is not a talk. Not a presentation by a professor or a consultant. It's a behavior by you when you deal with the people that want to deliver what people need. No, it's not what you need. This professional. Okay. When you value the value of the people than your own personal interest, this professional. Then from there, you have to empower someone. You have to fight the dependency syndrome. No more dependency syndrome. No more people will be chasing your tail end because they want a handout from you. Whom you empower? You empower, as I said yesterday, the right holder, the owner of the organization, the local community. You empower the Bosnian, the Chechen, the Palestinian, the Uyghur, Maybe the Syrian, the Yemeni, because you want them to stand on their feet. And this is the outcome of professionalism. Professionalism is empowerment. Empower women who are widows, or even women who are the head of household, or even young people from the young age. Empower them. Now we suffer from something called humanitarian colonialism or humanitarian <coughs> imperialism. When the big guys dictate to you what you need to do for them to get the money from them, not what they do for you to empower you. This is what we call the new humanitarian imperialism or colonialism. Empowerment should go deep down to the people who are paying our salaries, the orphans, the widows, and the displaced, and the victims of war and all these sorts of things. This empowerment. Once you do this, you start to create a local leadership. Local leadership. Because you will teach the woman how to knit or how to uh, plant something or how to weave. You will teach the young man instead of sitting doing nothing to do something positive. Okay? And that's it. Let the economy go around and keep training them. Then, if you want to go to become an institution, this is the A, uh, point number A, institution. You have to let your organization to be owned by the community. What does it mean? It means in the organization level, it could be your group, your people, your locality. Who can own the organization. But institutional is open for the public. They choose for you the CEO, they choose for you the board, because the board members come from the community, not from one group. They open their door to everyone to come, but this is their organization. That's when it moves up from being an organization, professional organization, into an institution. Institution will let any citizen in your own country to feel that they feel very proud to send their son and daughter to become your volunteer because they are transparent. Okay? 
because you are inclusive, including everybody. You get the best from the community to serve the community by the community without excluding. And this is having the diversity and inclusivity. You cannot become an institution unless you become inclusive in your organization and diverse and empowering the younger people and women inside the organization to become to the leadership position. As I mentioned to you earlier or maybe half an hour ago or more, that in the 90s, most of the people that came to make the high jump from Islamic leave were in the mid-20s. In the mid-20s at that time. And most of them were volunteers before they became employees of the organization. But you have to keep empowering them to prepare them for the succession planning and the leadership position. This is the institution. When you become an institution, you'll be able to have your externalization sorted out, have your full structure sorted out, have partnership with governments, with international organizations, with local organizations, with others, because you are an institution. Have your department to write paper, to advocate, to stand up, to produce all these kind of things. Because an institution is a production, production machine. Then here, you become an industry. Industry for me is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if I will do good. Do good. You do not say what kind of goodness. But keep doing good on an individual basis, on local basis, on community basis, or on being structured organization basis. But it's an order to do good. Allah did not say do good to the Muslims or non Muslims. Just do good. If Allah is Keep doing good with no distinction and no barrier, and no exclusion. Do good. And this is industry. You will never ever find a community that the charitable work is not cross-cutting every sector and section of the community. Look at any community, look at any country. They can't survive without having this action or contribution of the charitable organization to help whether we go to humanitarian or developmental or charitable or this kind of new terminology definition is not it's not yani, what you call it important but it's there because as we learn from the Quran in all the creations of God are nations like you, are tribes like you, are clusters like you. They have thinking ability, they have philosophy of their thinking, they have community, the community of the ants. See how they build their nest. The valley of the ants. And when they went down to look at the, the ants' nest, it was a valley. And each kind of ant has a specific job to do. The value of the bees. Or the, not the value, sorry. The bees, the community of the bees. And see how very well is structured. So have to look after the ants, the bees, and all the creations of God. <coughs> and this is actually when you are understanding who is living with you. Who is being created to help you. To stand for you, for your creator. All right, the Alps mountain. What do you call it? Alps? Alps. 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 Okay. Okay. Was created how many thousands or millions of years before Adam? Any answer from you, highly qualified people? <laughs> the Himalaya in India. The Mediterranean, the Indian Ocean, 
the Atlantic Ocean. How many millions of years? This has been created before you, your father, came down to earth from heaven. The one who created them to welcome you is the one who knows that at every inch on earth, number of creation of his needs this and needs you as a leader to look after them. In them home, in home, illa umam amthalukum. They are nations like you. Talk to one another. They have languages. Can you speak to them? Yes, are you prophet uh, uh, Solomon? <laughs> the only one who spoke to the ant was actually Solomon, not you, sir. Whenever you become Arturul or whatever it is, or Ardugal, <laughs> you can't speak to that. But he, he taught King Solomon, this be of him, to speak to the ant and the bird. And this is written, and everybody in different theology and different belief who know that. Actually, the ability of King Solomon to understand uh, uh, insects and, and birds and others. Even the Hubu bear, when he came late to King Solomon in his meeting, you know why he was coming like this? No, not the Hubu. The Hudu. The Hudu <coughs> in French? Uh, I cannot remember now. I had all these Arabic names. No, no, it's who? Uh, <laughs> Hold it in, in, in French. Who? La Hibsa. 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 The one who looks for the water. The bird. Hupu. She said the up. No, la Hibsa. La Hibsa. La Hibsa. La Hibsa. You got it? No. I don't know if that's what I'm Google. Yeah. You want to It's written in the Quran. Yes, they have it. It has a. Ah! It's a beautiful ah. Uh, bird. Wait, it's like. That's it. You know, when he came back to King Suleiman meeting, King Suleiman has the genie, the angels, birds, and everything. He came like this. King Suleiman said, What is he? He's late. If you don't give me an excuse, either torture him or I kill him. He came like this. And he's a little miserable. A little zoo, like small like this. <laughs> in, in confidence to the king. I came to you for my land that does not worship God. The land of Sheba, which is Yemen. And they started to lecture King Solomon. And King Solomon, because he was a just man and the community leader, said, okay, go and do. And the story goes on in the Bible and the Quran and 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 this is how can you empower the most vulnerable individual in your community? Okay, this is industry. Your work as a charity, your humanitarian work, cross cut all the sector of the community. If you go to a village in Africa, they need water, they need health and sanitation, they need agriculture, they need economy, they need community uh, center, they need everything. Education, empowerment, training. So when you go there and thinking that you are creating industry, you are actually working for industry, you will be able to go through all this. But if you think that you want to open an organization like this, you stand here, you stop here. And a lot of, to be very honest, Sister uh, Soraya and other people, most of the Muslim or third world charities are here, unfortunately. In spite of the fact they must have the budget of the institution, but they have the brain <coughs> of the elementary school boys or the secondary school boys and girls. That's the big vision. Clear? So you are industry. If there is no voice today, <laughs> me and you will go somewhere else. Huh? <laughs> and she'll give you the stick or she'll give me oh. the stick. She is the boss. 
<laughs> this is the first part of how we are industrial. The second part, I changed my job by the, the presentation. So this, because I want you to reflect. Because we became an industry, I will use the industrial language, manufacture. Manufacture means every one of those is like a structure. You have to structure everything you are doing. Idea has a structure. Philosophy has a structure. History has a structure. Everything we have to structure in our life. So because you and myself agreed earlier on that we are creating our part of an industry. Okay. Vision. What do you mean by vision? Stand up, please. Come next to me. Spontaneously respond to my question. Come here. Okay. By the way, she is the one who led me to lose my voice yesterday. <laughs> Audience, if you are complaining, complain to her. About her. No, it was my fault. It was not her fault. What do you mean by vision? Uh, what do you mean by vision? Um, for me, it's um, something which you see for a long term. Okay. Uh, in order to structure the meetings. Okay, very good. Anybody else? Define, come here. Show that because, Sorry, uh, no, because I want the people to, to see you. Uh, if there's no voice. <laughs> vision. What do you mean by vision? And how can we make our vision? Vision for me is the way to achieve our target. Okay. It's the structure we make and the way how uh, time, how we do, which uh, material we use, and where we are going to be. Inshallah. Thank you. Anybody for the definition of vision? Come on. Are you Mary or Maria? Maria. Mary, Maria, Maria. 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 Peace be upon her. The daughter of, uh, the, the mother of Jesus, sorry, not the daughter of Jesus. <laughs> the mother of Jesus, peace be upon her. Yes, vision. So for me, vision is uh, the, uh, the final uh, uh, target. In it's French, I have no problem. <coughs> so this is not really the language, it's just I'm trying to struggle my thing <coughs> because I was not expecting to, to come here. So the, the vision is... With me, you can expect anything. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Now I know. <laughs> so it's it's when you make plans, you take into account what what is the... what you want to achieve in very long term. So you take in, into account this very long tar target and then you plan possible taking into account. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Anybody else? Sister, brother. Ah, come on to the spot. Ah, 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 ah. Come on, come on. You have to stand up. I'm not going to, I, I, I put this point because I want you to, to believe that you can make vision. You can structure your vision. You can't live without vision. This is what I want you to be. People of vision. Okay, let me, yes, you are very ready, because you are changing your hand. If you change your hand and the pen, you come forward. Ah, it's finished, the decision has been done. Decision, come in. And you will be responsible for the recording. Again, vision, tell the people, they're listening to you. Um, for me, vision is the way that we do to achieve uh, the end. Very good, very good, very good. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Dobra, dobra. How can we make the vision? 
We go back to the donkey theory. Donkey theory is knowledge, experience will enable you to make the vision. Sometimes people could be gifted by God. Say that he, from the early days of his life or life, is a visionary young man. But not everybody of us is a visionary young man. Not everybody of us is gifted. If you want to start creating the vision, the amount that you travel will give you the wealth of knowledge. The amount that you, of time that you mix with people, from listening to the different problems facing people, <coughs> this will broaden your way of thinking. The amount of jobs that you have been doing, different experiences in different parts. The number and the amount of people that you know as friends. The way that your mother and father brought you and taught you the bedtime story by your mother or by your father or by your grandma or by your auntie or by your by or by. The way was the storyteller in the village used to come and make this story about the past. All these will be added to the mindset of the young boy or girl to enable them to create a vision when they grow up. You remember something? I'm going to read your brain. Your eye when you smile, like her eye when she glares and stares at me, that means that you are thinking seriously about something that you want to say. All this if you are not gifted like the prophets and the message of Allah or the chosen people of Allah, you can make your own vision through experience, through learning, through traveling, through mixing, through listening. And you'll be able to tell them within 10 years you can do it, not within one year. Because sometimes in the history of revolution, young people like you would like everything to be done like this. That for even when you marry your wife, the baby comes out after nine months, not in the honeymoon. That's right, it takes nine months for the baby to be developed and growing in the womb of the mother. Your son or daughter, when she was born, if you want her to become a professor, must take 30 40 years of education and experience. Oh, I want my son to become a professor. Not tomorrow. It's a process. The milestone is what they call it. Uh, what they call it, uh, roadmap. And you make the roadmap for your children. This is the vision. So you can become visionary people, and you can structure your way to make the vision that the organization needs or the community needs. How can you have a message. What do you mean by message? You are a young girl with a very strong committed to your message. What's your message? Somebody. <laughs> yeah, you are. Come here. I don't know what to say. So you have to say something. <laughs> hi. Hi, 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 hi. If you tell me one hi, I tell you ten hi. Uh, thank you. Message. Uh, I have, like, I'm not sure I got the. Sure what do you mean by message as a definition? I think I would be really interested to the vision because uh, if you have a vision, uh, you want to share your vision. So in order to share your vision, you need to think about the message that you want to share in order to make the people understand your vision. Yeah. Okay, carry on. I'm enjoying. <laughs> That's what I get for now. So is your message you would be one message for all the communities or different messages for different communities? I should ask this question, of course, we need to understand who we are talking to That's in order right. to talk to them directly. Okay. So, actually, when uh, what I was saying yesterday, try to uh, learn to listen, to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to understand who you are talking to in order to make them understand what you want them to understand. But of course, actually, I was thinking about the vision. Uh, you were talking about that in a very positive way, but some people can have, Definitely. Can have it in a very... Bad that way. Way. That's right. Yeah. Everything has both bad and yeah, good sure. sides. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you. Anybody else talk about how to structure our message? 
or what is your message and how to make a message yeah, because well, once you open your mouth, that you are ready to yeah, come to the stage. <laughs> but I'm used to entertaining. Yeah, very but not in. Not, not, not with the song. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not uh, from my experience with this experience. Anyway, so uh, the message for me is a short, condensed, um, like, um, brief idea of what what is our vision, and it should take into account, as Judy said, your audience. So a little guy will convey to, to kids will not be the same as another guy will convey to Muslims or to non-Muslims. It depends on what my vision is. So now we'll send you to a small village mm -hmm. in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Okay, Taiwan is the, the, the dispute about is it a part of China or it's independent. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a Buddhist majority. Maybe it's Christian. Maybe it's very, very my, small minority of Muslims. And you are sent there as an ambassador of Islamic relief to work with this mixed community with very little resources. What your message for them would be? My message. <laughs> Talk to those people. This are based the Taiwan, Ta Taiwani, from okay. Muslims, Buddhists, and Christian, and others. Well, Talk to them. <laughs> Not to me. I'm, I'm going to hide. <laughs> my message will, will, will be as the Prophet. As if you are going to be convinced to them. So, Ta'ala, we like a message, inshallah, in Jordan and other nations. My message would be the message that would be that can be shared uh, for the good of the people um, and for the good of the hearing people. So, that, that would be the message. I would be narrowing it to the strict minimum which can. Um, be good to everybody. Can you say it in French, please? Okay. Uh, mon message serait le message, en fait, uh, que votre Amalek vous a dit, pour, 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 pour euh, y parler dans le Coran. Ah, dans le Coran, en fait, Ta'ala et la Kaïdou qui s'en est venez vers ce, ce, qui nous, ce qui nous rassemble, en fait, et ce, ce qui nous réunit. Je n'ai pas la traduction, en fait, exacte en fait. Et du coup, mon message serait le message qui va réunir, euh, qui va nous réunir vers le strict minimum, qui va faire du bien à cette communauté euh, euh, sans tenir compte en fait de, de sa religion, de sa, son appartenance en fait, juste qui va faire du bien à tout le monde en fait, donc le, le strict minimum en fait, ça va, ça va être un message qui. Thank you. Why I'm saying this? Because you are a humanitarian worker, can go and work everywhere and anywhere. In Chechnya, in the good old days, we were stopped many times by security. Because what? Because we are making da'wah. And Muhammad used to tell them, we don't make da'wah. You know what he said? The officer said, your name is Muhammad. Your name is da'wah. Okay? You have a small beard. It's da'wah. You have a logo, which have the minerals. <coughs> it's da'wah. You tell me, it's da'wah, they give him Quran, they build him mosque, they give him hijab. No. You are da'wah, which is trying to preach. <coughs> Proselytization. <coughs> what? What do you say? Proselytization. <coughs> Positivism. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Macro. <laughs> okay. So that's what he told them. I heard this when I went to Chechnya first time in Grozny in uh, May, June 1995, after the first war. It was myself and a colleague of mine called Javid Bastam. You know Javid Bastam in uh, finance in UK, IRW. We were holding the Islamic League banner. And the young girl, like you, woman, when she looked at our banner, you know what she said? Just look at the logo. Islamiska. <laughs> Islamiska. In the middle of Grozny, which was totally destroyed. Identifying you by your identity by your morality, 
So whenever you go to any place like this, commonality is your message. Your personal belief becomes your behavior. Your behavior, if they like you and you are Christian, they will follow Christianity. If they like you and they like your behavior and your dedication and commitment, and you are Jew, they will follow Judaism. Muslims, they follow Islam. It's your behavior, it's your intention as well. So, commonality is for the operational field work, as Sister was saying. Because you are there to help them. But your own personal belief is for you comes as behavior, as behavior, as behavior, akhlaq, manner. It doesn't make any difference for me if you're wearing hijab or niqab or whatever it is, or long beard or short beard or you put some whatever it is, it doesn't make any difference for me. I look at your behavior, I look at your manner, and I like you or I don't like you. On the basis of the good intention in your heart. If you don't switch the intention right from day one, you can't have the success. Short level, but you're successful. Day. Thank you. This is the message. How can we create strategy? Here, to me, there's a lot of discussion, and I need you to start with. Because you are very brainy, and you are thinking deeply, and I want to pick you up your brain, <laughs> you take some genes or chromosomes from your brain or what's my brain? Come on, <laughs> Sister Brainy. How can you create a strategy? And what do you mean by strategy? I think strategy is a set of actions taking place in order to uh, implement the vision. Oh, very good. <laughs> can you clap for it? <laughs> Oh, you've been uh, hiding all this knowledge from me. No, so yeah. it needs a lot of thinking and. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. How can we build strategy? We build it uh, by being very strategic. <laughs> <laughs> now we become very diplomatic. Thank you. Anybody else tell me how can we build the strategy? Donkey again, you love the donkey. I think get him to dance. Maybe after we go out as men, you dance with Saad Sarira or the donkey. I mean, with experience. Okay, with experience. What do you do and experience and then. Uh, the process of making. The process of. Making, <coughs> yes. Kind of I want you to go to through the process of making a strategy because my. Because for myself, I don't want my strategy for the organization to be made by somebody from outside the organization. Coming with uh, some EOR, and this is your strategy, six, eight pages, and that's it. No. The strategy for me goes bottom up. Bottom up. Bottom up. What does it mean? I have to do what's needed at the TOR to all the workers from the field office to HQ and they have sent them all these criteria to answer. I put them because I know the organization, not me, I mean as, as, uh, as senior people, and they have to share everybody in the field, grassroots, everybody in the partner offices from bottom up, everybody in the HQ. It's not one size fits all. Then I have, or we have, to tell those people, you have a global strategy and local strategy. You have to marry your local strategy in Bosnia, in Chechnya, in Macedonia, in Sudan, in Afghanistan, to be a part of our global strategy, to feed our global strategy. So our global strategy will be made of local strategy to address your needs in your locality and the global strategy for the whole family. Here, if you do this and engage 
everyone in the organization, they'll be able to do what Sister was telling us about the definition of good. Engaging. Engaging people. Quite often, we pay 60 or 70 or 80 or 100,000 dollars for consultants to come and write strategy for us. And we don't use it. Because we're not a part of the discussion. The consultant will be sending some questionnaire to only a few people in the headquarter or in the uh, senior position in the field. But the rest of the people are not consulted. Even in the vision, must tell only the big people to have their own definition. But the best definition could come from a cleaner, could come from a security man, could come from a driver. I remember a statement mentioned by the founder of uh, Singapore in the 60s. You know what he said? That's why he invested heavily in education. Every child of Singapore is gifted child. It means every individual in my country is gifted. I have to invest in each and every individual. Every individual in the organization has the right to respond as a porter, as a cleaner, as a cook, as a driver, as a security man, as well as chairman or CEO or head of whatever it is. This is a strategy which is everybody in the community to rally behind you. A strategy should not only be made in the boardroom. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. And come and see me around if you want to fight with me physically. Absolutely wrong. Strategy is not a top-down approach at all. Strategy building is multidimensional approach. Even sometimes you ask your partner or not member of your organization to share their view about your strategy. This inclusivity, this openness, this transparency. Don't follow consultants who come and measure your strategy only by their limitation of thinking. Because they look at the strategy as tick boxes. But our strategy is how to reflect the feeling, even, even sorry, I forgot to say, even if sometimes we include the right holder, selected group from the orphans and the widows and the people in the field as well, not only our workers. Those people who are suffering 24-7, we have to ask them about their opinion, about our strategy. Strategy is not something you throw. A strategy is a feeling of how we can enable people to change their life by consulting them. All right? Culture. I'm responding to all what you said yesterday. The last question, which is the challenge. The challenge. Our challenge is now. Are you tired? Do you want us to stop? Or we'll finish this one. Our challenge is here. And this eight or nine points. Because we are very good at emotional response. We are very good at traditional response. We are very good at seasonal response. But not very good at the thinking response. Thinking response. Give yourself a time to think to philosophize, to reflect, to dwell, to contemplate, to extrapolate, and to opinionate your opinion, and your opinion becomes a document to guide others. Why, why look at the culture when I come to young people like you starting working in <coughs> organization like Islamic State? Because you have to know how you can create culture. We have to understand the culture of the local communities that are serving them as servants, as you said yesterday. So the culture, it might not be good to my culture, but I have to live with it. Because there I am servant. 
but they have to understand don't want to step on their feet on their toes this is what they mean by culture so what kind of culture do you want to produce a culture that they will take it from you they will say oh my god she's a good role model mother we get dressed like her we eat like her we talk like her this is a culture even cook like her it's a culture because they love you because they love you they respect you that's why you just don't do the culture only by lecturing but coming back by your morality and how you care for the people i was saying this because in the 70s or 80s the late Dr. Abdurrahman Samet, who was the founder of Direct Aid nowadays, used to say that I'm going to Africa to be with the people. This Kuwaiti, what Kuwaiti? Ahmad Lai, he was a medical doctor. And when he went to Africa, some of the countries, he found an old woman, either from Scandinavian countries, sitting in the middle of the woods with the people for years. To help them, he said, I cannot do what she did. She believed in her mission, she had a message, and she decided to stay with the people in their locality. I met somebody in Afghanistan 2015. His name is uh, she died unfortunately a few years ago. No problem. I'll get her image later on. She's in Afghanistan in the middle of the war. For years and years and years to advocate for Afghanistan. Originally from Canada or from America. And she was in the mid-80s when I met with her. She can hardly stand up. She can hardly stand up to talk to me. I said that, please speak to us. <coughs> Very highly respected. I met another woman in Afar. Afar is a part of Ethiopia. Majority are Muslim. But this woman is married to a Muslim man. Her name is Maria Fatima. She looks like my daughter in 40 years' time. And she decided to leave Australia, to leave UK because she had the dual nationality. And to marry to a Fari man, she was Christian and he was a Muslim, is a Muslim. And to live with the people in this area, very difficult. When it comes to summer, 40, 50 degrees, no facilities, no water. This is a message, this is a vision, this is a strategy, and this is belief. And people, when they love her, they will follow the culture. She does not have to give them, to force them to follow the culture. But she has to be our own mother. The people follow the culture. Culture is about how much people love you. So they dress like you, they talk like you, they eat like you, they cook like you, they behave like you. Ah. Can any one of you come and help me because I've been pushed? Immediately to pull up. Anybody did not speak to come and uh, highlight the rest? Come here because you are a big brain, another like. Oh, I don't brain. know. <laughs> so talk about value, your ideology, your ideology, philosophy, whatever you call. Choose one. Because we that. want you to create all this. Because here is no. how to manufacture this. Because it became an industry. But I'm not a specialist in that. No, no, it doesn't have to be a specialist. I mean, for the values of whatever the, you call it, it's up to you. Values choose, in, choose anyone. in humanitarian organization, I think uh, it must be very. Don't look at me. I'm not here. No, I have. Look to at the audience. I'm not now you are the lecture. But I don't know how to speak in front of the camera. I try. No, no, no. Look at the, look at the people. <laughs> we about the camera. So the values in our, in the multinational organization of humanitarian organization. I think it's important to know the values of the different cultures. Okay. 
when you are on the on the terrain, I mean it's on the grass so it's in English, I don't know if correct me. You have to be uh, perhaps to uh, first talk to the the most important person of the group and to meet them and to also to know exactly what kind of values they have on the culture. So everything goes together. <laughs> so that's it. Okay. Can you come here, sister? Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't and know if you understand what I mean. She will explain to me what you said. Yeah. <laughs> because I understand, understand, understand. Ah, I understand. Yeah, because you have to listen Actually, to Actually, I didn't understand, so I cannot explain. <laughs> okay, you say what you want. Um, well, for me, the values um, are actually, you have to decide how you want to implement, like on a moral level, your vis vision, your message, your strategy. So your values are the are the the how you how you implement actually all the all the, the things that came before. So you have to set some values in order to 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 implement your your vision. Okay. And it, for me, it goes it goes quite together with the ideology mm -hmm. and philosophy. So it's more or less it's the same. Maybe on a oh, oh. level. I hear some music from, from my ears. Go on. Stand next to them. Oh, we have to stay. No, no, here, see, she will stand. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, next to us, please. <coughs> <laughs> um, value for me is uh, values. It's uh, in, order, in order to federate people. In order what? Federate people. Did it? Uh, bring yeah, together, right. ah, together, yeah. together uh, uh, with um, all the things before, so vision, message, and the culture. So <laughs> okay. That's it. Do you agree with what they said? Yes, come on. I need to come? Really? Yes, because you have to stand next to them. Because <laughs> now we are picking your brain. I know that you have a lot in your brain. For me, values is the principle that guides your action. Allahu Akbar! <laughs> I think you come and go, 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 I didn't ask you to say. You come and take my slave. No. <laughs> say it again, please, so that you can write it. Hmm? Say it again, please. Uh, the principle. No, no, value is. Values. Principles that guide. Guide your action. Values are principles that guide your action. Beautiful. Beautiful it is. Thank you, ladies. And Anne, okay, so wait, 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 wait. She's she's actually yeah. <laughs> oh, value can be personal. Okay. Value can be collective also. Very good. Or, you know, organization. Very good. You make my day. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for the water, brother. Dobro dobro. Fala fala. Value. So what uh, let me Ask you why I'm talking about all this today and reflecting on the question raised by sister what's your name? Hana. Hana. Why I'm talking about all this? What is that to do with orphan sponsorship, with Kurbani, with Ramadan, with Fitrana, with what else? You have uh, uh, food basket, with uh, Authorization. What is it to do with this? Why, why I'm talking about all this today? And really for me, in the last one and a half hour, I'm giving you a headache. <laughs> and you're supposed to be listening to somebody give you something about project implementation, history, uh, finance, uh, maybe advocacy. Yes. Uh, for me, it's the benzene we make for the infrastructure. Are you like Benzema? Yeah, it's no fun. <laughs> no, no, Benzema, Benzema, and Real Madrid. And the. And Real Madrid. Mobile Uwezi. Yeah? No, Mobile Uwezi. Okay. So, for, 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 for me, how I can understand it, we need, uh, we say Benzema, gas was, and this manufacturing, it is all the strength that we have to, to make our, uh, our, uh, our job to, to be there to serve people in need. All right, that's the definition about why we are discussing all this. Nine points. 
which people might think has nothing to do with feeding people. It has nothing to do with finance. But we are creating industries. We are a part of industry, you know. We are a part of industry. We are manufacturing community, building communities. And we have to understand that in the community there is a history, values, morality, strategy, vision, message, philosophy, and, and, and. If we don't think about it from the very beginning, somebody else will think about it and send it to us. And we have to follow what they send to us. And this is what's actually happening nowadays. We are following values that are not our value system, philosophy that's not our philosophy of thinking, even reading history that we have not written, because written by somebody else. Even <coughs> empowering our community according to a program which does not fit them. Even respecting a culture that's our culture, or the, the culture of the people in need. That's why we have to understand this is a part of our package. Research is the cornerstone here. Without research, we cannot go anywhere. Without research and investing in research, we cannot go anywhere. Without analyzing, we cannot go anywhere. Without advocating, we cannot go anywhere. Without standing up for justice and rights of the people, we cannot go anywhere. We're always firefighting, standing up. Winter is coming, you said winterization. You said winterization. Is that you or her? Oh, no, it's her. Not you. Yeah, it's yeah. Come on. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's your right. I give you a right. You said winterization. Why? Because it's important. It's an important project. Okay, why? Because uh, when you see uh, some people um, freezing in uh, refugee camps or even uh, in other countries, that uh, you can't be insensitive. Okay, because there's a need, yes. an emergency. Yes. And you have seen it in the Syrian yes. and other countries as well, and in Yemen, yes. and, uh, and even in Africa. Because 20 degrees in Africa is very cold, or 14 degrees in Africa is very cold. Mm -hmm. Well, in Europe, 15 degrees, people can go outside mm -hmm. with shorts and with uh, whatever it is, yeah, what you call it. But this is the project. You can don't give it every day, every year, it becomes a traditional project. We do it every year. What I'm trying to say here, how can we stop people feeling cold? How can we advocate? for climate change? How can we advocate for anti-corruption in the locality? In the locality. When the aid goes there, I mentioned this in the, in the conference two days ago, in DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, one of the big donor agencies decided to give the corrupt government there the fund. Everybody was telling them, you knew that's a corrupt government. Why did you give them the fund? And the most of the money will not spend on the DRC people. Five in million internally and displaced people. In one of the countries which is the much, most richest country on earth. With all the minerals and the water and the land and everything. The highest trade of victims of rape. <coughs> when a young girl gets raped, Everybody in the village will rape him. What's so, what's, what, what, what crime that such young girl have committed to be raped by everybody? Then she becomes whatever it is. 85 or 75 armed group. And the donor countries, the donor agencies know each group is controlling a small piece of land. So the multinational companies go to this group to try to take the cheapest raw material from this armed group. You got it? Anti-corruption. Who gave the money to which agency? 
<laughs> I cannot tell the public. <laughs> don't don't I'll tell them. I'll tell you later on. So are the big agencies, big government agencies. And they knew that, and they were, were being consulting them heavily in the research paper. Did you know that this is a corrupt government? Why you give them the money? And most of this corrupt government does not allow the civil such organization to grow in the locality. To be empowered to stand up on the street. A lot of them were with us in the meeting two days ago here in Geneva. From Sierra Leone, from East Timor, from Afghanistan, from Pakistan, from India, from Bangladesh, from Syria, from Lama, uh, Yemen, and and as well as others. Transition is a project. What is the solution? That's what we need. That's why you are here. To ask people to allow the organization to fund the research, fund the advocacy, to fund building partnerships, fund lobbying. And this is the age here to go back to the previous presentation. We went from emotional to institutional. The institution does all this. Maturity. When I am when actually anybody would you have daughters and children at home, sons and daughters? You are? Mm -hmm. When they are at the age of five, kindergarten, age of fifteen, primary school, secondary school. The mentality <coughs> growing. University, different level. Post university, different level. Become married, having children, different. So this kind of development, natural development of the community, in the in the image of your children, you have to use it to develop your community that you claim that you are serving. That's why we need to invest in this. Our work is not only about images or about videos, about how many likes or how many hashtags, because we are dealing with whom? With lives of people, with dreams of people, with aspiration of people, with future of people, no matter who are the people are. We're not dealing with bricks or with land or with water only. We need this to help people. We have to make our life a catalyst for the life for the people that we are trying to help. We have to make our life a guide for the lives of other people. This is what we need to do, that's what we need to invest in all this. Actually, and to go from the emotion to manufacture our vision, our message, our strategy, our culture, our values, our ideology, our philosophy, our history, and at the end, continuous community building. Continuously build community. This is the objective of any organization, whether social or humanitarian. If we don't build the community and leave it behind independent, you are failing. How many years, sisters, in Africa that people have been spending billions, billions, billions of dollars, maybe trillions of dollars in Africa on aid, not on empowerment. How many billions of dollars have been spent on Syria problem? A no resilience program or development program in safe areas. How many times did the member of the Security Council use their vote unjustly in Syria or in Yemen? And nobody can talk about it. You got it? That's your role. You can't build the community unless we stand up for justice.
and justice sometimes can cost life. Chiji Fara, you know Chiji Fara? Anybody know about his history? Chiji Fara from uh, Argentina, Latin America? Chi. Chi, yeah. Ah, ah, yeah. Can, can anybody tell me the story of Che Guevara? Mm. Come on, every, everybody, everyone. Mr. Che was the Argentine and he uh, gave to uh, Colombia to uh, with Fidel Castro. To, Cuba. Yeah, with Cuba. Cuba. Yeah, he went to Cuba first and he, he fight with the communist because he was a communist in Cuba. Okay. Then after when the the Cuban army moved from Angola to Africa to help, yeah. and he moved until in the in the uh, 16 Six, in Nigeria in Egypt to see the the new government he brought the just post uh, independence. Then after the Soviet uh, Empire and the Soviet killed okay. help everyone. Let, let, let me. You want to say something? Once you put your hand in your mouth, so you don't speak. <laughs> Be careful. Don't make any movement. Our sister behind you, why you are quiet? <coughs> Chichi uh, Chi Chi Guevara. Okay, so was from a middle class family. His father was a medical doctor. And he was a medical student in the 50, 50, 51. He was living a very sta stable life. He decided to visit North Argentina at that time on a bike to see the mine workers and how much they are suffering. This was the changing point of his life. Next year, he decided to get a motorbike to go around the whole Latin America. He found, you know what he found? The language is the same, the culture is the same, the history is the same, the thinking is the same, the belief is the same, the value is the same, but people are dividing them. That's why he went from then and he wrote something for the best seller for New York Times at that time. Then he was to change it totally to the great hero that we are standing to remember his story, to fight for justice, fight for anti-corruption. Call his movement is Hispanic, and actually Hispanic, which is global or actually movement of the Spaniards in Latin America. And they went to Cuba, as you mentioned, but he said, I'm not here to become a minister of economy or a minister of industry. Then he went to Bolivia to help them. And he was not very welcome. And he was betrayed by a farmer. And when they asked the farmer, why did you tell the security about him? You know what the farmer said? He did not know who was the man, why the man is here. And whenever this man used to come to this area, the police come after him and frighten our sheep. So I told the police to come and take him. I said, how ignorant. The people you are standing for, you don't know the right. And that's why your message, sometimes you have to suffer to save people. Sometimes you have to give your life to save people. And this comes to the message. And this comes to the vision. And this comes to the values. And this is one of the people who are talking about him. Actually, as a hero. Actually, for the young people. They kill them, but he's still alive. A living legend as well. <coughs> okay? And unlike Malcolm X, Malcolm. Mm -hmm. like Martin Luther King, like Gandhi, like uh, Ali Aiza Begovic, and others in Africa. Anybody else? Muhammad Ali, yes, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali Clay, the, the, box, the boxer. Yeah, yeah. Muhammad Ali. Okay. Mandela, sorry, uh, Mandela, Mandela, Nelson Mandela, and others. Every country is producing a pioneering role model who have through the 
from the family of the Estes, who bought them as shining stars. Not only in the history of theology, but in the history of social work and humanitarian work. As I said, Dr. Abdelman Smith and the others in this area. This is why we are talking about it today. Last point here, community building. We need to see after 10 years in Yemen or in Afghanistan, <coughs> did we manage to build the local community or not? Did we manage to empower the local community or not? Did we manage to empower the local Bosnian or not? Or the local African or not? Or Sierra Leonean or not? Or Afghani or not? Or Yemeni or not? Or Syrian or not? Or Sudanese or not? Or South Sudanese or not? Or Congolese or not? Did you manage? This is the process of the industry which goes from the traditional, the emotional stage into the industrial stage. Your work is an industry. Your work is an industry. Your work is an industry to manufacture vision, message, strategy, culture, values, ideology, philosophy, history, community building, and local empowerment. A manufacturing industry. A manufacturing industry. Your work is not a job. A job is a mean for life, but your job actually is an industry. Industry which can get everything inside it. When you go to any factory or any company, they will put the mission, the vision, and all this sort of thing. But you have to believe that you are a part of a global industry and you need to become a player. I have a role to play in this global industry. Okay? Anything else? We'll conclude by asking you to come and say a statement, personal statement, to the public to encourage them to become social and material workers. Why? Each one of you will say it. We need you to encourage others, to motivate others. You can start. Um, as a humanitarian worker, I really think that when you give first, you will receive. Carry on. <laughs> God, sorry. Okay, thank you. A message to the people to encourage them to be like you. <laughs> because uh, I hate being gifted and I didn't support it. I think uh, I think it's um, we need a, a better world and uh, just uh, we need to just rub more dirt. Okay, very good. Not just sit on this rug. Okay, John. Justice. Encourage young people to be like you. Okay, justice, action. Very good. Thank you. Yes, yes, you can go to Francia. Yeah, no, Francia, no problem. Make, make, make Mr. Macron happy. <laughs> Ce que je pourrais dire, c'est que en travail dans l'humanitaire, on a réellement l'occasion d'améliorer ce monde. Et je trouve que des paroles et intérieurement, personnellement, qui sont très bien. English. He said, uh, he said, when you are a humanitarian worker, you uh, do your best to um, keep this world better and better. And even for yourself, you uh, you will be a better person. Thank you, thank you. Sister, your message to the young people, not to me. You encourage those people who are listening to you to be good as you are, or maybe better. Uh, first of all, I would encourage no one to be as good as me, but everyone to be better than me. 
Uh, and then I would just say, like, uh, working in a humanitarian organization is a way to give uh, meaning to your action and to your job and work. Thank you. Very good. <coughs> Very good. I want to <laughs> um, well, I want to say that we should see it as a blessing because to be able to help the the one we need and support is actually a blessing for us as well. And um, seeing it as this is is actually um, as we as you said yesterday. I mean, for example, the the power of a dua of the poor um, is actually benefiting yourself much more than um, than what you are doing for them. So it's it's a blessing. So. Thank you. Hey. Um, so uh, I would I would encourage everyone to do something with this humanitarian work, either it's uh, like it's, um, a volunteer or just as a job, because you you. You make the world better, a better place for everyone. And the main thing is that you, you never know who, when your turn will be the next. So as we said, we have seen in Ukraine, so people were living just one day and they just have a hard time now. So uh, as one other said, they can be on their way. Thank you, uh, French. Uh, I can translate it. It's like the. The life is a circle, so we, you never know when you turn to. Thank you. Uh, brother, Bosnia. Uh, <coughs> message to thank people to become that as up to you. So, as good as you are, or better than you? I'm more the better. Is the Le message que, que, que j'aurais à faire passer, c'est euh, d'aider, de donner de soi, car euh, c'est comme ça qu'on pourra euh, accomplir de belles choses, aider les personnes dans le besoin. Et euh, Inch'Allah, tout, tout, tout ça, Allah pourra nous, nous récompenser et euh, surtout. Euh, Voilà, essayer d'accomplir euh, de, de, de belles choses et au mieux. Voilà. Thank you. Uh, he says that uh, when you are acting uh, with your heart, uh, with your intention, uh, you will be, uh, you will do um, good things and you will be rewarded by Allah. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I think we have a big, big chance yeah. in the humanitarian uh, work. Just enjoy, and uh, uh, just be happy because you are blessed by God. If you are in this world of humanitarian, in Adam and Allah have you follow with Mukhair, you will see Okay, sister. <coughs> So uh, what I wanted to say is uh, to work in a humanitarian community like uh, Islamic Relief is very important because you improve every day yourself and I think you can also um, improve a little bit the world, how it's going on and that's very important. And what I felt here in this community <coughs> here in Geneva is like a big family. And you are together and then also the boss is not the boss, he's also on the same level as everybody. And this is very important because if we have a small problem, we can just work together for <coughs> a solution and everybody is very helpful. Thank you. Uh, for me, uh, it's not uh, just a job, it's much more a feeling. And uh, if you want to have more success, to have uh, more energy and to change the world, you have to go and change it. So um, by humanitarian work, you can uh, you can uh, give give um, all you have to to try to change it. So if you want to change it, 
Well, that is really Encourage people to come to join you. What to tell them? What to tell them? If you want to uh, change the world, uh, come to you. Come to your uh, humanitarian journey. Come to you, huh? You are the humanitarian no, journey. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, sister. So, in my opinion, a job shouldn't be just a means of uh, paying bills. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have a purpose and to uh, get a job in alignment with your values. So if one of your values uh, is to um, make people happy and to improve their life, you can go and work for and do this for them. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, what I have to say is uh, that uh, your job is not um, only a choice, it's also a part. Uh, I feel it like it's a, uh, we have, all of us, a part of uh, responsibility in uh, the Navy. So, yes, uh, what uh, it makes me uh, really stand in, in this job choice. It's uh, to see uh, all the contributions of the donors, the volunteers, the work, the humanitarian workers, and see uh, the real impact that we can have. So it didn't make me really worried about uh, the future and being in hope. So let's yeah, be engaged. Yeah, yes, let's be engaged and be engaged. And, and be engaged. Be engaged. And when you become engaged, be engaged. And engage others. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sister. Um, so, uh, maybe there are more humanitarian uh, on the world. Um, I think uh, the world would be better. Yes. And um, the the key uh, of the success is love and uh, solidarity for me, and I have a slogan, uh, um, human by nature and uh, humanitarian by choice. Human by nature and humanitarian by choice, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. Sister Hanan, <laughs> can you go and get your mask please? No, 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 no. Hanan, Hanan. You go, go and get a demand. <laughs> it's because of you who changed everything. The question yesterday. Well, so, as a humanitarian um, worker or director, you can make the best for the poor, for the needy. And it is also a self satisfactory. I mean, if you go <coughs> home at the end of the day, you feel better and you have. Closing now, the won't you? You have accomplished something. I mean, yeah. it's a good feeling for yourself, and uh, it's not just for yes, not just for the salary. I mean, you, you make it really for for you and for the people. So and you for, are for Allah. <laughs> so you encourage young people. Yeah. How to encourage them by telling them what? Give them a message. One one sentence, two sentences. Um, just don't um, reflect. Just go ahead and. Don't think too, uh, too much. Just go ahead and uh, you will see it will also give you a good feeling. Thank you. So before, before Gamal comes, I'll just conclude by saying when we started for nearly 40 years ago, <coughs> I had no experience whatsoever what I'm talking about today. I have no realization whatsoever what we are going to do after 40 years, after 30 years, after 20 years. I had no knowledge of the sector whatsoever. Nothing. 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 We learn as the donkey theory <coughs> at the very beginning. That's why I want young people like you are younger than you don't become upset of seeing how bad the world is, how corrupt the world is. Start 
as Sister Hanan says, just to start, clear your intention, and say that I'm for the people, to help the people, and let the people to teach us, let the community to teach us, and let God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to guide us, whether we are Muslim or not. So to be very honest, none of us has been born as a teacher, or as a professor, Whatever it is, we all learn from our mistakes. Do mistakes, but learn from the mistakes. If we fail, we fail to succeed. Then we succeed, then we fail, then we succeed, then we fail, till we achieve what the community wants. That's actually our message to us. We are hosted by Dr. Jamal Rafid to give us the final closing remarks in French. In Arabic, in English, up to you. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. Jazakallah, Khair, Dr. Barak, Lofi. Bon, écoutez, j'espère que euh, il y a eu beaucoup d'interactivité. Je ne sais pas si vous avez posé beaucoup de questions. I wonder if they uh, ask you many questions or not. They ask us uh, questions. I prefer <laughs> that you ask him a lot of questions. No problem. Next session, I'm, I'm here till Friday. If you want another session, I'm we will organize other sessions, inshallah, so tomorrow and also Friday morning, inshallah. Mais euh, effectivement, moi j'aimerais, s'il vous plaît, hein, hier j'ai parlé, lui il a parlé, aujourd'hui, mais c'était dans un autre sens. Et moi j'aimerais que ce soit dans l'autre sens. Vous avez reçu beaucoup de choses. On a enregistré pour une fois. On a enregistré ces interventions. J'espère, j'ai vu qu'il n'y a pas, le, pas mal de prises de notes. Euh, demain et après demain, j'aimerais que ce soit dans votre sens. Des questions de votre part. Surtout, que ce soit sur des choses d'ordre philosophique, stratégie, vision, ou même d'ordre opérationnel, même historique. Il, il a voyagé, Dr. Hani, Canada, tu vois, c'est ça. Patapé, tu vois, c'est ça. Haïti, pour le mariage, ça. 84 pays qu'il a visités. Les pays chauds, il y avait des guerres. Je vous ai parlé de ce qu'il faisait en Bosnie et autres. Monsieur Bosnie, il a risqué sa vie dans le fameux tunnel ou comme je vous ai dit, un terrain découvert avant d'entrer dans le tunnel où les sniper étaient là. Les étudiants égyptiens en Bosnie qui ramenaient des aides pour entrer en Bosnie dans des camions et des camions criblés de balles. Les gens risquaient leur vie. Donc, Wallah, j'aimerais. J'aimerais bien, il nous a raconté pas mal de choses. J'aimerais bien qu'en lisant, en, est, en revoyant ce que vous avez noté, préparez le maximum de questions parce que ça sera très vite. Très vite, Inch'Allah. Je vous accorde un appel. Donc, il a dit que l'Islam est We have to ask you uh, a lot of questions because you have uh, a lot of experience, mashallah. So he wants it, um, us to be uh, more interactive with you uh, and to, uh, to, uh, to learn a lot and uh, to benefit a lot of your experience here. Uh, he saw that we are taking a lot of uh, notes and he wanted us to, uh, to read uh, tonight our notes and uh, to structure our opinions and ask you some questions tomorrow. And he talked about uh, the Bosnian um, war and your experience over there. And he reminded us that uh, a lot of people, actually believe, uh, like you, um, 
or giving their life and sometimes that's their life for the cause. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But I, 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 I want to add something. Vision, interaction, mm. um, planification. Without action, that's right. Yeah. There. I think you yeah, already you can agree with this. As I said yesterday to do to you, this is my fourth Eid celebration. Where is the Kahk? Ghetto, ghetto. Ghetto. Ah, a ghetto? Where is Shibakiya? Ghetto Shibakiya. Eid Shibakiya. Yesterday, you had a. I said yesterday Eid celebration. But you didn't eat the cake yesterday. Yeah, but actually, they should have understood that go and bring Shibakiya and Kahk and others for me. and. Uh, <laughs> next year. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> or next day, inshallah. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. And uh, it was an honor and pleasure for me to be with you. I'm sorry for keeping you for more than two hours in one session, which is difficult. But you managed to prove that you are very patient to listen to somebody who can give headache to anyone. <laughs> and I hope that when you leave the room, you won't have headaches. You have to still have your head on your shoulder. Assalamu alaikum wa Thank you for the night, inshallah. Thank you.